Heavenly greetings in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, the Lord be with your spirit wherever you are watching all over the world. Thank you for joining us live and direct here at the University of God. And you may be watching us on our official YouTube channel or on Facebook. And also we have good news for the Spanish and French speakers around the world that you can also watch and, and see and hear the translation live in your language in French and Spanish on the Spanish YouTube channel, the official UOG YouTube channel in Spanish, and also on our French YouTube channel. Now, many of you may not even know that we have a French YouTube channel, but we have. So we thank God for that grace, and we know that you'll be blessed today by that wonderful translation. So thank you for joining us again for part three of the Messianic journey through the Bible. We know you've been blessed by parts one and two, and I believe that you're still meditating over the revelation that you received in parts one and two, that God created you to be the greatest product of the Holy Spirit, designed to think, talk, act, and live with him. And that is what Jesus Christ came to restore. That fellowship and relationship that was broken by sin, by disobedience, Jesus Christ came to restore that relationship and fellowship between God and you. And we learned today in, uh, we learned yesterday in the class yesterday all about Abraham, the father of faith, and how you are the real seed of Abraham. How? By being the spiritual descendant of Abraham with all the blessings of Abraham through faith in the finished works of Jesus Christ, because that is the real seed of the promise of Abraham, faith in the finished works of Jesus Christ. So if you stay in faith, you too can be blessed as Abraham was blessed. And remember, just to finish, the three points that we learned from yesterday, to remember to be like Abraham, simply believe the word of God, that God will do exactly as he promised, yes. We should be fully persuaded by the word of God alone not by what our situation says, what our feelings say, what the world around us says, but by the word of God alone. And hold fast to your confidence in God when your faith is tested. So we're looking forward to part three today as Racine comes out to share with us the revealing word of God. Remember, we know God by the word he speaks and the word he speaks represents his heart's desire for you and me today. And what better time for us to discover God's heart's desire than this Easter period? And that heart's desire is to connect with you by way of a special relationship, because that is what you were created for. So thank you so much. And if you're just uh, joining us in this live broadcast, you can share the link with your friends and family. Let people know that this is live and direct here at the University of God. Thank you for joining us here in the classroom once again, where we're seeking the spirit of God. God bless you and don't go away as we come back right now to continue the messianic journey through the Bible. God bless you.
viewers thank you all over the world thank you for your patience here we are today for another session of this special easter program messianic journey through the holy bible following the footprints of the prophet of the old testament that ushers the way to the coming of the savior of the world jesus christ whom we are celebrating in this easter you know easter mean passage over is a passage from slavery to liberty from darkness to light and it's a time to sober reflection to check our life to examine ourselves as the bible says in the book of second corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 we should examine ourselves to know whether we are in the faith for by faith we are christian by faith we are saved by faith we are forgiven we are children of god by faith in his finished work of the lord jesus christ at the cross of calvary thank you yesterday we talk about abraham the father of faith we talk about how God fulfilled his master plan in his creation. Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the Holy Bible and the scriptures because all the prophets prophesied concerning the future coming of the Messiah. Addressing nations, addressing kings, and warning them to get ready to receive by faith the coming of that seed that will rescue us from the dominion of sin. We said in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, God said the seed of the woman will come to deliver us from the snake, which is the ancient snake, which is called Satan, the tempter, and to break the yoke of sin and to restore the communion and fellowship between God and man. And man will be changed, receiving newness of life, to be able to walk again on the earth in communion with God, to walk in the spirit, knowing the heart of God, knowing the mind of God, Walking in communion with God as our shepherd. And that's the key to success. Because God loved the man and blessed man and gave him dominion. It is the will of God for us to prosper in every aspect of our lives. God wants us to plan with him. So anytime we make plans and actions without including God, we are going to fail. Because God sees the future. He knows the future. He sees what is ahead. He knows what is best for you and you and me. So now we saw that Abraham, God gave him in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, verse 1 to 3, God gave him three promises that God will take you to one land. And so God said he will make him a great nation. And in him all the families of the earth shall be blessed in him. This was right at the calling of Abraham in Genesis 12. These three are embedded in this calling. These things are in the heart of God right from the beginning. That the day God will choose a righteous branch that will establish his righteousness on earth as a gift. Abraham believed God and checked out his father's house and ventured into faith life without any definite promise. God led him on Genesis 12 verse 14 to walk around the land of Canaan and he saw it. But these two promises, Abraham saw them from far. Because God said, I will make you a great nation. That promise is to happen generations and generations. Don't forget, in Genesis chapter 17, God made a covenant of a covenant for everlasting covenant with Abraham. Mean God is a God of generations. I invite you to go to our message, which is in the universe of God in YouTube, called God of Generations. God is a God of generation. Whatever God does, it is for the future. When God gives us instruction, it is to build our future. When God warned us, it is for the future. Because God sees beyond. Remember, when he created the earth and man, he created every plant with a seed. Meaning, multiplication is embedded in our lives through generations. So, when God gave this promise to Abraham, Abraham believed he never queried God any second. He quickly stepped into the direction of God's calling for his life. In Genesis 15, when he asked God, how would I know I will possess this? God said to him, your descendants, in Genesis 15, verse 3 to verse 13, Genesis 15, verse 13, your descendant will be 
enslaved in a foreign land for four generations, 400 years. At the appointed time, I will visit that nation. I will judge that nation. I will set them free and I will bless them mightily. That was a promise. So by that statement God gave in Genesis 15 verse 13, we understand that that generation will be in a foreign land. What is a foreign land? We all know that foreign land is Egypt. That's why God, in Genesis chapter 12, verse 10, he created a famine that pushed Abraham to go to Egypt. When he went to Egypt, prophetically, Pharaoh took Sarah, and God judged Pharaoh and released them with great blessings. So now this second promise is a great nation. God is going to fulfill when the time begins to reach the fulfillment. But before, God start working throughout the generation. That is his master plan for the nation and master plan for the creation. That is this, all the families of the earth shall be blessed in your seed. This one refers to Genesis chapter three, verse 15, when Jesus Christ will come, reach out to the nations with the blessing of the promise of the Holy Spirit. All the nations will be blessed by the promise of Abraham will receive the promise of the Holy Spirit, born again and venture into faith life. Right. Now today, we are going to talk about Jacob. It's all about Jacob. We continue our journey here. Sorry. Right. After Abraham, something happened. One day, Abraham getting old, he sent his servant to look for a wife for Isaac. He said, I don't want my son to marry any woman of Canaan. He sent the servant to go to look for a wife. And he said to the servant, God will send his angel ahead to make your union successful. What does it mean? Means the wife, the God-given wife of Jacob, will be chosen by God. God will be involved in that godly family. We told you in the beginning, God wants to fill the earth with godly homes, godly Christian homes, people that walk in the light of his word in full righteousness. When the servant came, the angel made the journey successful. And Rebekah came to Isaac and became his wife. You can see all this in the Bible. But... Remember God said something to Moses later in the book of Exodus when God revealed himself. God said, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and Jacob. That's what God said. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Such will be my name for all generations. That's what God said. And God said, He will, when He promised to Abraham in the book of Genesis, chapter 22, then you read from verse 13 to 16, God said, Oh, I will multiply your descendant as the stars and the sand of the sea, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed. of the earth shall be blessed in your seed. In your seed. And that seed is singular. He mentioned one specific seed, which we all know will lead to the Messiah, which is Jesus. But now, if you notice something, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When you look through the Bible, you will see something very strange. What is it? You will see the wife of Abraham, Sarah, the wife of Isaac, Rebecca, and one of the God-given wife of Jacob we talk later, Rachel. These three women were all barren. All were barren, barren, all of them. In Genesis, 
chapter 30, verse 11, Sarah was barren. In Genesis chapter 25, verse 21, Rebekah was barren. In Genesis chapter 29, verse 31, Rachel was barren. So if God went, what is the purpose for that? God is showing us the, that these women had a special grace from God. Without that special grace of God, they will not be able to give birth. God intervened supernaturally and Sarah gave birth to Isaac. Now, when Jacob married Rebekah, one day, Rebekah cried out because she was barren. And Isaac prayed to God. And God opened his womb and gave her a grace to conceive. The scripture says that she conceived, but there was a trouble. The pregnancy created a lot of problems to her. At that point, it was unbearable for Rebekah. And she came to complain to God. Let's read. I'm taking you to the book of Genesis, chapter 25. Yes. From verse 21. Yes. The children struggled together within her. And she said, If all is well, why am I like this? So she went to inquire of the Lord. Take note of that. Rebecca went to inquire from God. Mean that woman is a special woman. She had relationship with God. This is the woman called the seed of the woman, a woman that's able to have a woman of faith. Who can have access to the mind of God? Because she inquired of God and listened to what God said, verse 23. The Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. I'm going to write it as we go here. Genesis 25. God said, number one, two nations are in your womb. I continue reading. And the Lord said, two people shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. That's what God said. Two, the younger will be greater. That's what God said. Than the elder one, the first one, the firstborn. God revealed something to Rebecca here, which Isaac did not know. When God is executing his plans in our lives, he designs and arranges events. Events which seem ordinary, you see it as a history. It's not history. There is the unseen hand of God behind it. Esau was the firstborn. Of Isaac. Jacob was the youngest. And when you read your Bible, you will see that whenever a man is about to leave this world, he will lay his blessings to the children before departing. It was a tradition. And when they did that, the blessing of the firstborn is twice than the others. So definitely, the blessing of Abraham came in full to Isaac who inherited. But Isaac has to. When Rebekah had the problem in the, during her pregnancy, the Lord gave her a prophetic declaration that the young boy will be greater than the first one. This gives us the first clue in the life of Jacob we call the grace of God. The grace of God. Grace of God has to do with election, election of grace. What does it mean? God chooses as he wills. Once we understand this, there is no competition in destiny because the way a man of God executes his plan in the life of everyone differs. 
God has a plan for Esau, but he must have plan for his creation to fulfill the promise of Abraham was through a special seed. And he's revealing that that seed is Jacob, not Esau. So Jacob was the elected one of God. And Rebekah heard it. But something happened in the book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 28. I'm going to read it to you. It says, Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Isaac loved Esau. Rebecca <laughs> loved Jacob, and that is the issue. So who among them would prevail? Because God revealed to Rebecca what's going to happen, that prophecy has to be fulfilled. One day, Jacob and Esau had a meeting. Jacob is a man of destiny. We can see that Jacob was a child of promise. Because of that, Jacob had a sense of destiny. Jacob had a sense of destiny. He had what we call quick perception. That means he had spiritual understanding of God's ways. Today, Jacob has got a very bad reputation. They say, he's a deceiver. <laughs> That's what they say then, he's a deceiver. He deceived, he's a liar. He never deceived anyone in the light of God's word. In the light of this prophecy, we know that Jacob never deceived anyone. It was as it should be by divine will of God. How do we know? One day, Esau came out from the hunter, tied, and find Jacob Cooking a stew. You will find the book in the book of Genesis 20, 27. So Jacob was eating, and, and the brother asked him, Can I share your food? Jacob tested him. He said, Before I give you my food, sell me your birthright. That's what he said to him. Sell me your birthright. He was checking to know whether his brother understood what birthright really means. Esau said, of what value is his birthright? When Jacob understood that he, has, he doesn't know the value of this birthright, then Jacob further tell him, swear to me that if I give you my food, you give me a birthright. And he sweared, and he saw. And that day, the Bible say, Esau despised the birthright. From that moment, God knew it takes a man of spiritual perception to understand the value of birthright because it has a sense of destiny. If Esau had a sense of destiny and the value of the first right, he would never accept to sell it, but he sold it in his heart. So one day, when Isaac was old and is about to leave this world, time to give the blessing of Abraham to his seed, definitely Jacob was determined to bless Esau. Because the scripture says he loved Esau. And he called him, say, my son, go and hunt a game for me. Prepare for me before I bless you. That's what he said. But Rebecca was there. She overheard what Isaac was saying to Esau. Rebecca wanted Jacob to receive a blessing, not Esau. Why? Because she understood what God told him. Why? When she was pregnant of the two. And she did something. He called Jacob. He said, Jacob, come. Go and get me a lamb. I will prepare it. Give it to your, to your father. And go and tell your father you are Esau. So they can receive the blessings. That's what he said. Jacob said to him, but mama, my brother has hair. I don't have any hair. He said, come. She took the hair of the animal, put it on the hands of Jacob. She took the clothes of Esau and dress Jacob with it. So can, Jacob can smell like Esau, look like Esau. The, brother, the father was at the end of blindness, so could hardly see. Jacob said, mother, if I do this, instead of a blessing, I will receive a curse. And Rebecca said it, 
let the curse fall on me. Why we are saying this that seems just like a history story? Because God said the seed of the woman, the seed of the woman will prevail. So God will use the woman to, end, to bring that decision to come to pass. So Rebecca convinced Jacob and said, listen to me, listen to my words. And Jacob obeyed. He came to his father. And finally, Jacob received the blessing. It was later after he said the blessing, his brother came. We can find this in, this in the Bible, in the book of Genesis chapter 27, from verse 1 to verse end, to the, to the end. What does this give us as lesson? God chooses as he wills. It is not by power, nor by might, that we receive the promise of heaven. It is by pure grace. Grace means undeserved favor. Grace. Undeserved favor. God chooses, He chooses who will, who wants to choose. In Exodus chapter 33, verse 19, God said, I give grace to whom I give grace and mercy to whom I give mercy. You, I don't know what is your situation. I don't know what is your problem. I don't know what is your background. I just want to let you know that Jesus never consults your past to determine your future. Jesus has come to fulfill the hidden plan of God in your life of you and me and everyone else. You can see all the biblical and great men Jesus will call, Peter and others, they were simple fishermen. And one day, Jesus came by the seaside and found Peter, a simple fisherman, Say, said, follow me. And he followed him. The people he called was not intelligent people in society, but humble people. God chooses as he wills. That's why the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 16, it does not depend on he who runs or he who wills, but God will give grace. I will talk about the life of a prophet, Tim Joshua, we will know. He came from a very humble background, Arigidi Ondo State in Nigeria, a small town, very poor background. But God chose him a mighty prophet. Mean where we are coming from does not mind for God. What matters is where you are going. He was called by God. He had the promise of heaven in his life. And when the time comes, God will use that promise to propel you to the greatness of God, whoever you are. Therefore, when it comes to the grace we're talking about, Jesus has come to put an end to our past and give us a future, a promise of heaven, a promise great in the, all the promises of the Bible. But we can only receive that promise by grace. So, let's continue. What happened next? Immediately, Jacob received the blessing. The brother threatened to kill him, and he ran away from him. In Genesis chapter 28. I will read. Verse 10. 28, verse 10. Let's see here. Now Jacob went out from Bathsheba and went towards Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it on his head and lay down on that place to sleep. And he dreamt, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth. And he is to reach to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on him. Verse 13. Behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give it to you and to your descendants. Verse 14. And God said to him, take note, all the descendants, all your descendants shall be like the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. And in you, take note, all your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. 
I am with you and I will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. You can see God said two things about him. That all the families of the earth will be blessed. And God will multiply his descendants. The same promise God made to Abraham, he gave to Jacob. So now the question is, when will God and how God will execute this plan? The Bible says nothing happens for nothing. I mean, nothing happens by chance. By chance. There is an unseen hand of God in the affairs of man. And uh, right, mankind. This shows that there is a plan of God in the life of every person, every person. And there's a plan of God for nations. And God said, through Jacob, he will do it. Now, how God will do it? Jacob, his wife was called Rachel. I will skip there. You can go and read the book of Genesis chapter 27 to 28. But Rachel was barren. That's barren. God intervened and gave him one son called Joseph. And Joseph became so special to him. So special. We all know the story of Joseph. Through the seed of this one called Joseph, God is going to fulfill the plan he said to Abraham in Genesis. Chapter 15, verse 13 to 16, he said, your descendant will be in a foreign land. Foreign land. And then they will mistreat them. In 400 years, in fourth generation, God said, I will come and set them free and I will bring them into the promised land. When we understand this, you will know that the Bible, everything about the Bible is prophecy. The Bible is prophecy. It is a description of future events before they ever occur. They are in the heart of God. They are in the mind of God. We have read the story about this. But you see, that behind that story, there is a divine plan of God to fulfill his plan for the nation of Israel and for the whole world. To fulfill the plan for the nation, they were in Canaan and they were fine. Jacob, Joseph, will never, absolutely never leave the the comfort of their home, of their country, to go to a foreign land to be oppressed. Nobody will do that. Nobody. Now, in our lives, God may allow what we call unchangeable events. Unchangeable events, the event that the grace of God, the sovereign will of God, will allow to happen in our life. And very often, there are painful events. Very often there are foolish events. <laughs> I say foolish event. One day, this young boy called Joseph had a dream. He dreamt and he saw that he was having seven plants. Eleven plants was bowing down to his own. There were twelve. He was a twelve. They were bowing down, bowing down to her. He understood immediately the meaning. God gave him one gift to Joseph. He had the gift of dream and interpretation of dream, which God will use later in Egypt. 
he explained his dream to his brothers. Because at the time, Jacob gave birth to 12. Immediately, the brothers heard what Joseph said. Jealousy came. The same way Esau became jealous of the grace of God in the life of Jacob wanted to kill him, the brothers of Joseph became jealous of that gift and began to hate him. And Joseph slept and had another dream. This time he said he saw the sun and the moon bowing to him. <laughs> he knew what it means. The sun represents his father and the moon his mother. He, tempt, he, he, told, his, he told his father, Father, I have a dream. I saw the sun and the moon bow with him and the father got annoyed. Are you telling me that I'm going to bow to you? This means if God gives you a vision and it is opposed by men or situation, don't reduce your vision. Stay in the will of God. So that dream became the roadmap God gave to Joseph. And through that roadmap, God will usher him to the land of hatred. Through that roadmap, God will bring all the family to Egypt. How did God perform that? God first allowed that hatred of these brothers to send Joseph to, to sold him as a slave. You will see that in Genesis 39. And Joseph was sold. Joseph was sold as a slave. And they took him to Egypt. And there in Egypt, Joseph was sold to a man called Potiphar. Come to see the mightiness of God. We human beings, we say, ah, these brothers are wicked. They are bad. That's, we see things at face value. But the hand of God was behind it. God does not mind challenges. He sees beyond it. God, and seeing the hand of God allowed this foolish thing to happen to Joseph for a purpose. For Joseph to leave Canaan and go to Egypt. And there, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of foreign land of suffering, God blessed him mightily. Anything, everything Joseph touched flourished, flourished to the extent that his master discovered that this man has a special gift. Whatever the man Joseph touches, man was blessed to the extent the man said, I give all my property to you to handle without asking you any account. And Joseph became a boss as a slave in the house of Potiphar. But one day, when the time has come, God wanted to use Joseph to draw him closer to the king of Israel, of, of Egypt, to the king of Egypt, to Pharaoh. God gave him a gift, dream, interpretation of dreams. We all know. And one day, the wife of Potiphar says, wanted to have a affair with him, and Joseph refused, and they accused him wrongly, and what happened? He was put to the prison. When Joseph was in the prison, that's one of those foolish things God allowed to happen in our life. That connected him one day, one specific day, to the throne of Egypt, to Pharaoh, through the gift God gave to Joseph. Now, when the time came, God has a plan. What was the plan? To create a famine, a mighty famine all over the region, to the extent that famine will reach Canaan and all the nation will run to Egypt for food. So God blessed Egypt mightily. And now the time has come for God to, to, to reveal the gift of God in the life of Joseph. Joseph in the prison, you know, had two people. One had a dream, and the other another one. The first one had a dream, that the dream showed that he was holding the cup of wine and giving it to Pharaoh. The other one had a dream that he was carrying bread on his head and birds were eating on top of his head. They didn't understand what the dream means. Joseph said, why are you worried? One of them telling the dream. He said, ah, this is the meaning of your dream. 
that in three days, Pharaoh will call you. He will forgive you. He will restore you. And you will be serving in his presence. When the other one saw that the dream was fine, he told his own to Joseph. And Joseph told me, you, your case is the opposite. They will hang you and the birds of the air will feed on you. And the dream came to pass. And the Bible said the first one was restored and find himself with Pharaoh. And one day, that's the gift God will use. So when the time came for God to try to move Jacob, to move from, from Jacob and his family, to leave their country, to Egypt, God did the same thing he did to Abraham in Genesis chapter, chapter 12. He allowed famine. God uses famine. Famine. Because of the famine, the whole family will run here. And Joseph was here. So now the question. God said, how can I promote this Joseph and glorify myself in his life? He gave a dream to Pharaoh. One dream. He dreamt he saw seven cows, very beautiful. And after seven, ugly one came and ate them. After he saw seven plant, beautiful. And seven, ugly one came and ate him. He didn't understand a dream. So he called all these people. Who can tell me the meaning of this dream? And then the first man goes off interpreting. Remember, ah, there's a man in the prison. I forgot. He told me everything, my dream, and everything went well. I said, call him. No, they called Joseph. When Joseph came, he was able, as a man of destiny, as a prophet, to interpret the dream perfectly. And, and told Jacob, now, seven years of famine are coming. Seven years of plenty are coming. But after seven years of famine will come, they will destroy everything. So I'm advising Pharaoh to choose somebody who will help you to manage all the food of the seven years so we can survive the famine. Pharaoh said, where will I find a person like you? You are the one. And can't you see what God did? Now God used this gift to take Joseph next to Pharaoh and gave him favor, gave him mercy to Pharaoh. And that's the starting point where God will fulfill the plan to move the family of Jacob to Egypt when they came to look for food and they stay in Egypt. When they stayed there, they stayed there for 400 years, the Bible says. But now I want to explain something. In the life of Jacob, and that's the purpose of this demonstration, Jacob did came to Egypt and revealed two things. The mystery of grace. The mystery of adoption. And Jacob prophesied for the first time where the Messiah will come. Sorry. Remember the program we are saying? We are following the, foot, the footprint of the prophet to find a trace of Jesus in the Old Testament. There are many things that happen in the life of the patriarchs. They were the shadow. But behind the story, God was still saying something. What was God saying? That his plan to be fulfilled in humanity, it required grace of God. And God's mighty hand will fulfill that plan in the life of each individual, in the life of all nations. When Jacob came to Egypt, and he was old, about to die. He did something. They have a tradition to always to bless their children, the firstborn. I'm taking you to the book of Genesis chapter 20, 38. Return your Bible at home with me. Genesis chapter 48 from verse 4. Then Jacob, let's start from verse 3. Then Jacob said to Joseph, 
God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me. And God said to me, Behold, I will make you fruitful. I will multiply your people. I will give this land to your descendants after you an everlasting possession. Number three. And now, Jacob says, Your two sons, Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you, that are mine, they belong to me. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. Genesis chapter 48, verse 5. What did he do? Jacob adopted the two sons of Joseph. Ephraim and Manasseh. When you read it, it looks like a story, but there is a hidden truth God is showing to us here. These two children were born in a foreign land, while Jacob has an, an, a firstborn, which was called Reuben. Why Jacob did not bless his natural child as they used to do? But this time, he bestowed the promise, the blessing of Abraham to these two children. And he said to Joseph, these are not your children. They are my children. The one you will have after will belong to you, not to you, not to, you to me. They are mine from today. They are no longer your children. That's what he said. That's the mercy, the mystery of adoption. God is showing us to us how the nations will be adopted so they can become partake of the commonwealth of Israel. It was a prophetic sign on how God through Jesus when the time come will adopt the nations through Jesus Christ through the gospel of Jesus this means the foreigners will be what Paul called grafted in Christ to the commonwealth of Israel. When you see this, the Bible always said that there is the unseen hand of God behind the stories of the Bible. That's why we should not read the Bible like an event. We need to have the Holy Spirit to reveal to you what is the underlining truth in it. And Jesus said to the Pharisee, the scripture testify of me. And when he resurrected the day, he took a book. He told them all the prophets said about him. And he went to the book to tell them, they were talking about me, about me, about me, about this is God you're revealing how God, the nation, will become seed of Abraham. All the nations will be blessed in your name. That's why they see the blessing. When Jacob did this, Joseph was not happy about it because man will always like the first child to be blessed. And Jacob will do something. Let's turn our, let's turn our Bibles to the book of Genesis. We continue. Yes, now, Joseph, verse 12, Genesis 48. Joseph brought then beside his knees the two children and bowed down to the earth. Joseph took both Ephraim with his right hand. I would like to demonstrate it today. Joseph stood in his right hand. He put Ephraim, which was, who was the firstborn, and took Manasseh on the other hand, the left one, and bring them to Israel. He presented the firstborn on the right hand of Israel to lay hands on him. But Israel didn't do that. He crossed his hand and purposely stretched the right hand to the small one. You remember what happened? Jacob remember what happened to him in the Muslim. God chose the young one. 
and he did the same thing. That's to say that man will not decide. Election is by grace, and God chooses whom we want to choose. And Jesus said, many of the last will be the first. Many of the first will be the last. That means the righteousness of God that is coming, you know, by power, by might, by the grace of God. We are saved by pure grace of God. Now, Israel stretched out the right hand and laid it on Ephraim's head, who is the younger, and the left, left hand on Manasseh's head, guiding his hand knowingly, the Bible says knowingly, because Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph. Listen to his word. He said, God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has led me all my life long to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless these children. Let my name be named upon them and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. So he adopted them as his own son and blessed them as he would they were his biological son and put the name of Abraham and the blessing of Abraham on these two children born from a foreign land. That's the mystery. When Jesus came on earth, Jesus came to give the blessing of Abraham to those who believe. And he's the right seed. But for the promise to come, Jesus went to the cross to die for us. For those who believe in him, receive the promise of Abraham, the promise of the Holy Spirit. We talk about Galatians 3, 13 to 15. And then you become children of Abraham by faith in the finished work of Jesus. And God will send the spirit of adoption that cries out Abba, Father, into our heart. So God revealed to Jacob the mystery on adoption, how through Christ nations will be adopted into the commonwealth of Israel. That's God revealed to Jacob. Number two, the mystery of grace that God chose him. He was the youngest. What does it mean? God takes unlikely people, as Prophet Jesus said, the mystery of grace, God takes unlikely people and puts them in his palace for eternity. I will write it for you. The mystery of God's grace. God takes unlikely people and what? Puts them in his palace <laughs> for eternity. Jesus said, in my father's house that I many mentioned, I will go and prepare a place for you. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be given to you. No one can qualify for the grace of God. Jesus has come to do two things in our life for us to enter this mystery. Jesus brushed aside our unworthy past and he, he, he gave, sorry, To our future by giving us access to God, to the kingdom of God. With this, we have right standing with God through Christ Jesus. That's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, He made him he who knew no sin, to be sin offering for us, that in him we become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's the mystery, election of grace that God gives to you and me watching. If your faith is in Christ, believing that he died for you on the cross, you believe that he was buried three days, three nights, and he rose from the dead on the third day. If we repent of our sin and turn to him and make him our Lord and Savior, the Bible says we have the gift of the Holy Ghost, eternal life. 
and the grace of eternal life will be yours for those who believe in his name. That's it. So we can see God revealed his plan for the nations through Jacob. And now at the moment of dying, in Genesis chapter 49, Genesis 49, Jacob called all his 12 children and begin to tell them what will happen in the future to every one of them. He is a prophet. So he prophesied for the first time in the book of Genesis. It came to one of his children. One of his children. One of them will lead to the promised Messiah. One of them. But who? In Genesis 49, verse 10, you will see here, I will read with you. I start from verse 1. So Jacob called his son and said, Gather together that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last days. Gather together and hear, you sons of Jacob, and listen to Israel, your father. Now I'm going straight. At home you can read everything, but I'm going to write to the point. In verse 10, he said, The scepter shall not depart from Judah. He mentioned the tribe of Judah. The scepter shall not what? The scepter shall not depart from the tribe of Judah. That's the first thing he said. After he said, nor the Lord give a beating until Shiloh comes. What does it mean? This means Jacob is saying that a special king, a special king will come from the tribe of Judah. He said this more than 600 years before, more than 100, 100 years before. He prophesied that from Judah will come a king. And from that king will come a specific man called the Shiloh, which is represented Jesus the Messiah. Someone whom the nations will follow. He will rule nations. So we can see that Jesus came, said, I come to fulfill the Bible, the scriptures. No prophecy of the Holy Bible is void of fulfillment. Jesus is the surety, the assurance of every God's word. Jesus is the fulfillment of every word of God. That's what he said in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Now, what lesson can we learn from what we are seeing in the life of Jacob today? True principle of God. That is for us. These were signs, but it's for you and for me today. It's not a history book. It's reality. Reality means God operates grace. Grace means Jesus Christ has done everything for you and me to be saved. By what? His finished work at the cross. Where he shed his blood to redeem us from all our sins. Remember? God showed this to Abraham when he asked him to sacrifice his son Isaac. Which God will do by sending Jesus to the cross to fulfill this prophecy for you and I. The mystery of grace. 
Jesus has done everything you need for you and me. What is our role now? What is our role? We said yesterday, appropriating faith. But what is our role is to believe. Just to believe. That is faith. Faith in who? Faith in Jesus Christ. The Son of God. The Lamb of God. Who takes away the sins of the world. You have to believe Jesus' resurrection from the dead. Why am I saying this? This is the purpose of Easter we are celebrating today. That's what Jesus came to do. Easter is the transforming power of God to break the yoke of sin upon our lives. And then to transform our life from one generation to another. From one world to another. From darkness to light. From sin to righteousness. And to become citizen of heaven. And when you believe, the Bible says, God sent the spirit of adoption in our heart crying, Abba, Father. That's why he said, unless you are born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the kingdom of heaven. The king prophesied was Jesus, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. If you believe in him, as the Bible says, you shall never be disappointed. A new life will come. You will receive the promise of Abraham, which is the promise of the Holy Spirit, Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. And then you become sons of God. That's what Paul did. Paul was a Pharisee who never understood this until he had revelation of it. So, my dear brothers and sisters, the, the grace of God is for everybody. Jesus has done the work 2,000 years ago. But are all the people, all the nations say? That's why he said in Matthew 28, verse 18, he sent the disciples, go to all the nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. That's why the adoption call, we call God Father. Because through him, we receive the spirit of sonship. The spirit that cries out, Abba, Father, in our heart. So thank you for today. So today we have seen the mystery of grace operating through the election of grace of God. And God can use, change anyone anytime, irrespective of your nation, irrespective of your color, whether male or female. The Bible says Jesus has come to make all things new in our life when they accept to seek the face of God, the kingdom of heaven. And that power, transforming power, will work in our life. Repentance and baptism of the Holy Spirit. So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. For those who are watching, we ask for your special blessing. The scripture says, there is truth in God's word, a hidden plan. It is the Holy Spirit that opens our eyes to see that plan. As Jacob had a sense of destiny, I pray, you enlighten the heart of everybody with the spirit of revelation, the Holy Spirit, so we may know your way, understand your way, and seek heaven, seek the kingdom of God, seek the inheritance of the sins in light that only Jesus can give. Father, open our heart to that faith, to that illumination of the spirit of Father, to know who Jesus is in this special Easter season and change our life forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Remain blessed.
Thank you so much for joining us in part three of the Messianic Journey Through the Bible today with Racine, where we learned that God is the God of generation. Yes. And he works out his plan for mankind through generations. Yes. By pure election of grace. And what is grace? Undeserved favor. Grace by faith in the finished works of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We can see that in the book of Genesis. We can see that God had already purposed that salvation should be through faith so that man might be prepared to receive the gospel unto salvation. And that's what Easter is all about. This should be a time of seeking the salvation of our soul because we are the promised seed of Abraham by faith in Jesus Christ. So right now, take a moment after this message now just to search inside yourself and ask, God, give me faith to believe that you are the Son of God. Remember, it's just for you to believe. That is what it means to appropriate faith. And that is how you can have that faith of Abraham, that faith of Jacob, that faith that God designed you to have when he created you in the beginning. So as we follow through the prophets in the Bible to see the footprints of Jesus Christ, we believe and pray that God is stirring in your heart a new and fresh desire to improve and deepen your relationship with Jesus Christ, because that is what the University of God is all about. And we saw again another messianic prophecy in the book of uh, Genesis 49 verse 10, where Jacob had that insight that the Messiah would come through the tribe of Judah. Shiloh would come a Messiah would come, a king would come to rule the nations. So the reason why we're going through this Messianic journey through the Bible is to open our spiritual eyes to the meaning and to the revelatory insight in the Word of God. And we believe that as you've joined us today, your heart is open to the Word of God, to the Spirit of God, and God's Spirit is moving in your heart right now. So we can't wait to hear from you. Send us a message. Uh, you can tell us in the comments section how you enjoyed today's journey and share the link with your friends and family as you get ready to join us tomorrow. Same time, same place here on the University of God. Don't miss it. God bless you.